Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I figured I would give you just a little bit of an update with what's going on with me and tell you a little bit about the changes that I'm making to the way that I am eating. So I'll see you back here in just a second. With every start, we are born again. Open your heart and spend this time in your head. Hey guys, so if you're new here, uh, my name is Amy and I have been on a low carb journey for three and a half, almost four years. I have done the whole thing from keto to low carb to carnivore and literally every iteration of that in between. I have been trying to find my niche, my very happy place. For those that don't know, my name Carnivore's Angel actually came from my husband. You'll notice that Carnivore is apostrophe S, so it's possessive. I'm the angel. <laughs> While I have been carnivore in the past several times, I am not currently a carnivore. And I honestly don't know that carnivore is really going to work for my body. I've been trying for a couple of years to find my happy place in carnivore. High protein, high fat, one-to-one, -one, every combination in between as well, from grass-fed, grass-finished, down to grocery store, whatever I can afford. And my body seems to be letting me know that enough is enough. I don't know if you've seen my video, The Doctor Turned Me In. I'll link that one up above. Kind of gives you the rest of my history of where I'm coming from and why I decided to go low-carb in the first place. I will link that up above for you to be able to watch if you want to get a little bit more of my background and my history. Well, I recently started experiencing the same thing that happened to me the first time that I went carnivore, which was my esophagus actually begins to close up and refuses to let me swallow. The last time it happened, I was more high protein, and it or higher protein, and it was grass fed, grass finished beef. I thought, I just don't like grass fed, grass finished beef, and apparently neither does my body. I've made a whole lot of changes since then. Well, circle around to October of 2022, and here we are. I was doing a high fat version of carnivore. Same thing started to happen again. And this is this version of carnivore looks totally different than the last time that I was the from the first time that I implemented it. So I had to make a decision. What am I going to do? I've tried high protein. If my protein goes too high, my pain level goes through the roof. I have Lyme disease. And I am currently deciding the best way to tackle that. I have tried the high fat and I truly thought that high fat carnivore was where it was for me. That was, that's where it was at. It was going to be amazing. I tried it and for four and a half months, it was wonderful. I was doing great. Lots of positive things were coming from it until yet again, I was not able to swallow my food. So back to square one, at least it kind of felt like it. Then I remembered. I know how to muscle test. I began muscle testing to see what foods I could handle and what foods sounded good. And honestly, I didn't even have the foods in my house. I got a list of all kinds of different foods and I began testing one by one to see which ones my body really wanted. It's where things get a little interesting. Now, kinesiology, muscle testing, is, has been around for a very long time. It's utilized by a lot of chiropractors and a lot of other uh, practitioners use it for their patients to be able to determine what foods they should and should not be eating. Supplements, you can even figure out your dosage with certain supplements. Uh, I'm not saying that you should go through your medications from your doctor or your cabinet and change everything via muscle testing, but that's what some practitioners use to figure out your specific dosing. Well, I started muscle testing and I didn't just stick to low carb foods. I got a list that had 
the the gaps protocol for example has foods on there that we in the low carb space or the keto space would never even consider well i went ahead and i tested pretty much everything and i got my list of foods that my body was telling me it wanted honestly it wasn't a lot there was i think 15 things on there that i have not been eating and haven't eaten for years honestly so what did i do i started to introduce those foods because it was getting to the point where i couldn't eat i couldn't drink a fatty coffee i couldn't chew and swallow anything my body was letting me know we're not going to do this you're not listening this isn't what we want this isn't what we need so we're giving you a very clear signal that this is not the path you should be on i guess in some ways i'm kind of lucky that I get those signals and my body can communicate in that way. But let me tell you, it gets a little frustrating and sometimes even scary. So I have altered my way of eating and I'm not going to tell you what I'm eating. I'm not eating wheat. I haven't brought that back in. Uh, most grains, 99% of grains are not on the table. There's a few tiny little ones, but I don't partake in them very often. The thing is, I have to find a way that is sustainable for me. And that means eating things like pumpkin every once in a while, or a salad every once in a while, or some other things that most people would never be okay with. Uh, honestly, I would say if you could label me anything, Mediterranean would be close, but I'm still at least 50% animal based. Just keeping it simple, but by adding those different foods back into my diet, it's been possible for me to actually eat. So I'm finding what is working for my body. And the reason that I'm not going to share with you what I'm eating is not because I want to hide from you what I am eating. I am not sharing with you what I'm eating because I don't want anyone to copy me. Because I used a very specific method and a tool to determine what my body wanted to eat. If you get anything from this video, I want to encourage you to figure out for yourself, possibly via muscle testing, what your body actually wants to eat. If you were to ask me about two months ago, if I was going to be carnivore or keto forever, I would have answered you unequivocally yes, but my body decided otherwise. So while I'm still considered low carb by most people's standards, I have to listen to my body. And it took me a little while before I decided to make this video. It's been about three and a half weeks since I changed my way of eating because I wanted to see what was going to happen. The last time I tried to bring carbs in, it did not go well. I did fruit and honey and that kind of backfired. I ended up having a massive panic attack. It took about five days to build up in my system, but my mental faculties were just not okay. This time it's been completely different because I was able to ask my body what I am missing, what I need. The crazy thing is that even though I've been carnivore or ketovore or keto for the past three years, my body is lacking in a lot of nutrients. And everybody would say, well, that's even more reason for you to stay carnivore because then you can actually get those nutrients in an animal form that your body can use properly without the conversion that it has to do with plants. I 100% would have agreed with you two months ago. And yet here I am because my body is now saying, uh, yeah, you're giving us all of this and we aren't able to use it. So we're going to need a different source. I have had to kind of turn off my brain and put everything else aside and forget what a lot of the things I've learned because they've been holding me back. They have been making me worry and fear that there is a problem. As soon as I turned that off and I started listening to what was inside and I began implementing that without fear, things began to work a lot better than I anticipated. So that's where I am now. I am beginning food introductions. I haven't gained any weight. I haven't had any negative side effects. I've only had positive ones. For one, 
my hair finally slowed down with the shedding. Three months after I went to the high fat, my hair started falling out with the vengeance again. And that is just now beginning to slow down. But most notably, my leg cramps are finally gone. And my heart palpitations are getting better in order. One of the things that I have struggled with in all of my two years of carnivore or variations of carnivore is balancing my electrolytes. I have had the hardest time balancing them. I have tried every iteration, even muscle testing, to figure out how to balance my electrolytes. However, I was never able to get any good results. So what I've done is by including some more carbs, still low carb, by including some more carbs, I'm allowing my body to balance the electrolytes on its own. When we retain water, which ironically, I haven't gone up in weight, but when we retain water with more carbohydrates, we also retain our electrolytes. The fact that I don't have heart palpitations, I haven't had any dizzy spells, and my leg cramps are completely gone tells me that I am doing the right thing for my body at this time, and it is able to now function in the way that it should be. Where am I going to go from here? I have no idea. I am going to keep going on this path until it is obvious that I need to make a change. So I'm just going to keep on keeping on. I'm going to pay attention to what my body is telling me, continue to figure out what it really wants to eat and see the results from what happens. Uh, I just recorded a video about the carnivore bar, which will be going up, I think, next. And the carnivore bar. Still meat and fat. And I did eat the one that has honey in it. But I'm still very animal based and focusing on making sure that I get all of my nutrients, all of my vitamins and my minerals from my food. I am still cognizant of oxalates, but I do consume some things that have oxalates. I do consume plants that have anti-nutrients and could it could go on and on and on. I can debunk absolutely everything that I'm doing and yet I'm actually getting results. And I think that that is what matters more than anything. Because in the end, the reason that we're all doing this is to find our best health. And I truly believed two months ago that low carb keto carnivore, as close to carnivore as possible was the best way for me to do that. I have to say I've changed my mind. I have to disagree now because I am feeling better. I am doing better. I am sleeping better. No more three o'clock in the morning wake up times, which has been absolutely wonderful. Now, I am not telling anyone that they have to do what I am doing. Actually, that's why I'm really not telling you what I'm doing because I really kind of don't know what I'm doing, but I'm feeling better. And I'm finding my path forward because in these absolutely crazy times, I need to also try to find something that's sustainable and sustainable now does not look like what sustainable was two months ago. Everything is changing so rapidly and I'm trying to simply keep up with it in some ways as well. I just don't really know what the future holds, but I know that it's going to be good because I'm learning to listen to my body. I'm learning what my body truly needs and how to give it what it is asking for. And that's really my goal. The whole purpose of my channel is to share my journey, not to be placed into some box that says, oh, well, I call myself a carnivore, so I have to follow your rules. Or I call myself low carb and these are the only foods that I can eat. That's just not who I am. And I've never been that person. I have always said that you get to decide what you're going to do on your journey. You get to make your own rules and that we also need to respect one another in finding what is going to work for ourselves. Because when it comes down to it, I'm the one that has to suffer the pain of eating too much protein. 
and I am the one that has to suffer with the heart palpitations, leg cramps, and 3 a.m. wake-ups if I can't balance my electrolytes. So I'm going to listen to myself. Unfortunately, sometimes it's kind of hard to hear what the self is saying, but I'm doing my very best. Anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know what I was up to and how I am now eating. I really am not going to be doing a whole lot of what I eat in a day videos because I don't want anyone to copy me. I, that's not entirely true. I would like for you to copy me in the fact that you begin listening to yourself above all others to figure out what is truly going to work for you. You don't have to use muscle testing to do that, but listen to the feedback. Sometimes we just know that something is not right. I've been battling the leg cramps for two years now. I knew that something wasn't right, but there really wasn't much I could do about it. It is now finally getting resolved. So don't give up hope. I know that it's hard. I know that sometimes it's very confusing, but in the end, it's all about living our best lives now, in this moment. I don't know what the future holds for me or for you, but I know that I'm gonna do my very best to make it the very best. Thanks so much, guys for listening to me ramble and for checking in with me today. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit that like button so that you can let other people know that this content is worth watching. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys on the way. Bye. Oh, there we go. And the sun is now coming out, so my lighting is terrible. Let's go back just a tiny bit. If I live this way, there's a lot, there's a lot. It's made it, it's made me be able, it's, if you, if you get, if you would have asked me two months ago, I'm going to have to get up and close that because it's getting crazy bright. Oh my gosh. Like closing up the curtains because do you see this? Do you see, y'all, you can see the shadow of my light ring, which is on. That's how bright the sun is right now. Oh my cow. But it makes my eyes really pop. Okay, let's see if that's better. I will see you guys on the way.